I'll call it dream because I don't know another word to call it. In the dream, I wake up, I look at the back wall of my room and the wall is gone. And there's a storm, the wind is howling. And I'm saying they're kind of cold and wet now. And it's in the night and I'm seeing all these people running past me, with their hands over their head like they're running for their lives in panic. And I'm wondering what is going on? Why are they all panicking like that? And a voice says to me, if you listen to what I tell you and do what I say to do, you won't have to worry. The rain's not gonna hurt you, the wind's not gonna blow you. And the first thing I noticed when I sat up is that I'm all wet. What in the world was that? I was about 22 years old and um, as I would do periodically, I came home to Long Island for dinner at mom's home. As soon as dinner was over, my mother gets this kind of weird look on her face, like something uncomfortable is going on. You know, I have something really important that I want to tell you all. Uh, it's very difficult for me to say, and, and I know you're going to think I'm crazy. And we're like leaning on the edge of our chairs. Couldn't imagine what was going to come out. And she tells us that she now believes in Jesus. And that's when I like freaked out and sometimes, oh my God. I don't even know who that woman is sitting there, but I don't know her. That's not my mother. Mom, this, this can't be. The rabbis have looked into the Hebrew scriptures for thousands of years. If, if in any way spoke of Jesus or pointed to him, they would know. But they reject him, so it, it can't be. When dinner was over, the three of us got her from the table wondering, what do we do now? But that night, sleeping in my old room, my old bed, I had a very profound experience that I guess I'll refer to as a dream because I don't know what else to call it. Was that God speaking to me? It was a very peaceful uh, state, uh, as wild and unusual as it was. But I didn't get the whole message of the wind and the rain and listening to him and not having to worry. So I'm going back to the things I used to be doing, which was you know running around with my friends. Tuesday night, we know we went to this club. On Wednesday night, it was that club. Dating this one, dating that one. Every night was a different club, where to go. I have some money in my pocket, so I'm like, hey, you know, life is great. The world is my oyster. And by and by, I'm starting to realize that, you know what, it's not quite as much fun as it used to be. Where is this going? I really hope there's something more to life than just, you know, where's the next party or, you know, gee, is this, is this really it? So that next, maybe six, eight, ten months later, I remember it was the summertime, and uh, I came down with mononucleosis. So here I am alone in the city, sick as a dog. I do what any good Jewish boy would do. I came home to mom. And every afternoon, she's bringing me in these little things to read, these little pamphlets, these little tracts, little scripture booklets. There's all these prophecies about the Messiah and the Hebrew Bible, about where he'd be born and when he'd come and what he'd do and how he'd be killed. And I was thinking, what? Never heard any of this. And these pamphlets are also talking about how all these things are fulfilled by Jesus in the New Testament. What, what? And I saw looking up, are these things really in there? And sure enough, they are. Every one of them is in them. I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know what to make of this. My mother says to me, Hey, guess what? I met a uh, Jewish rabbi, and he's a believer in Jesus. And we start attending the Bible study every Tuesday. And now for the first time ever, I'm meeting other Jewish believers in Jesus like myself. My whole lifestyle that I was used to was now over, running out, going to parties, dating. What was I going to do? So I began to pray for the first time. And one of the things I was praying for was, God, you need to really show me that this faith in Jesus is real because look at all I've given up, I'm being ostracized, and life is crazy now. And I'm reading a story in there, and it's Jesus speaking. He says, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts upon them may be compared to a wise man who built his house upon the rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and burst against the house, and yet it did not fall, for it had been founded on the rock. And those words like jumped out at me because I realized that was exactly my dream that I had 17 years earlier. If you listen to what I say and do what I tell you to do, you won't have to worry. 
This was an answer to my prayer of God confirming that this was all true. Really, I guess for the first time, a real peace started to enter my life that I finally have focused my attention on something real.